Now these last couple of examples deal with another application of our exponential, our natural exponential function, which is radioactive decay. So the model that is pretty much the standard model is something like A equals A sub zero E to the RT power, where A is the amount of material left after a time T. A sub zero is the initial amount of material and R is the rate of decay. So we're going to see a common thread with these types of problems as far as what their function looks like. So we have the number of grams of a certain radioactive substance present at time t is given by the formula n equals 200 e to the negative 0 0.001 t, where t is the number of years, how many grams are present at time t equals 0, how many grams are present at time t equals 500. So not really much involved with this question. You just have to be able to use your calculator correctly. So now the one thing you, you should try to understand is what do they mean by t equals zero? So that's basically when they start the clock for when this uh, radioactive substance is going to start decaying. So that's t equals zero. So that's the initial amount or the initial time. So, in, and as far as uh, a couple of ways to tackle this question now, one is, remember up above, we said that A sub zero is the initial amount of material. So what is A sub zero in this function? So now they're using N, so we could say it's N sub zero, but either way, it's the number in front of your E. Whatever that number is, that's your initial amount, <coughs> typically. Not always, but typically. So, so we could say that um, t equals zero implies that n of zero is equal to two hundred. Now, if you're not a hundred percent sure about that, and you want to, another way to double check it, the way to do that is actually just to plug in zero for t and see what happens. So, if we plug in zero for t, we should get the same result. So, if we looked at n sub of zero, we got 200 e to the negative 0 0.001 times zero. So we get 200. Now all of this in the exponent is just gonna multiply out to be equal to zero. So you got e to the zero power. And if you remember your properties for exponents, anything to the zero power except zero is equal to one. So this should be 200 times one, which is 200. And the units on this, since we're talking about a number of grams, so technically this would be grams. Now for the second part, t equal to 500, we really just have to plug it in and see what we get. So now... Let's see what our exponent comes out to be. So 0 0.001 negative times 500 equals that. So there's our exponent. So now we have to E it. So second, so that gives us that value. And now we have to multiply it by the 200. So we get 121.30613. So if we round that to one decimal place, so that's going to be in grams. So not much to it. Again, you're just plugging and chugging. Once we get into the next section, we're going to see there's a lot more cooler applications we can do related to radioactive decay. But for now, a lot of this is just going to be plugging and chugging. So let Q represent a mass in grams of radioactive plutonium. So whose half-life is 24,100 years. Wow. So remember, half-life just means that it, how long does it take for something to be cut in half of its original size? So whatever you started with, it's going to take 24,100 years for it to get cut in half. That's a pretty long time. So the quantity of plutonium present after T years is equal to Q... 16 times 1 half raised to the t over 24,100. So now 
again, we're just seeing what we had initially. So remember, we we kind of set up above that the number in front of your E is your value, but we don't really have that situation going on here. So let's just do it the longer way, which would be to plug in T equals zero. So if we got Q of zero equal to 16 times one half, and we got zero over 24,100. So we got 16 times one half, again, zero over 24,000 is zero. One half to the zero is one. So it looks like we just got 16 grams. So 16 grams is your starting point. And now if we look at 75,000 years, So again, just plugging all this stuff in first. Now, to try to do this properly in your calculator, again, we can do it a couple of different ways, but if we want to keep this one half, if we're going to use our calculator, it might be a little easier if we change it to a decimal. So, so we're going to say 16 times 0.5 and let's just see what that exponent turns out to be. So if we do 75,000 divided by 24,100, we get 3.11203 Now, <clears throat> depending on your calculator, you can kind of do all of this in one shot. I'm gonna, I'll show you on the other calculator that you can do it all in one shot if you want. Um, but if we're gonna do it like this, let's do this exponential part. We'll save the 16 for last. So if we say 0.5 and we wanna raise it to, now I don't wanna to have to retype that whole decimal. I can just type in that as long as I use my parentheses. So if I say 75,000 divided by 24,100, close my parentheses, there's my exponent. And then if I hit equals, now I've raised it to that power. So that should take care of all this exponential stuff, and now I just have to multiply it by 16. So I get 1.850566 and so on. So let's go two places. So after 75,000 years, it's almost, it's about two grams left. And we, which should hopefully make sense. So remember, after 24,000 years, it's going to get cut in half. So there, it drops it down to eight. And then another 24,000 will drop that eight down to four. And then another 24,000 after that will drop it from four to about two. And that's a little bit more than three times as much as that. So it should be a little bit more than two uh, or a little bit, excuse me, a little bit less than two grams as a result because it's more than three times the half-life. So, so that should be right. And again, if you wanted to do it on a graphing calculator, it's going to be much, much easier because you can just type everything in. You can even put the one-half in there if you want. And then we want to raise it to, again, use your parentheses. Oops. Make sure you type it in correctly. Divided by 24,100. Close your parentheses. And there you have it. So you get the same result. Okay. So that wraps up 3.1. So 3.2 now is going to get into the inverse of the exponential, which is our logarithmic. So we're going to see how we have other types of applications we're going to be able to tackle with that. So see you in a minute.